you have to shock your body a little bit if you want to maintain your weight loss. You can't just do the same thing forever. It doesn't mean that you need to flip-flop the kind of diets that you do. You just need to get a little bit strategic about it. I stumbled across this by mistake when I was going through my own weight loss transformation. After I lost 100 pounds, I struggled on how to maintain it. I was always fearful that I was going to go back. That's always, it still is in the back of my head, right? But I learned that there are certain things that you can do and things that actually have legitimate scientific names to really make sure that you maintain your weight loss. We're going to talk about the protein sparing modified fast for maintenance purposes to use it intermittently to yield that just awesome result. I do want to make sure you hit the red subscribe button and then please do hit the bell icon to turn on notifications so you never miss our daily videos. I'm not a doctor. I'm some guy on the internet. I just know some biochemistry. Now I will mention here too that if you want to check out Thrive Market down below in the description, I do have a bunch of different grocery boxes and bundles there. Thrive Market is an online membership based grocery store. So that means that you can pick the kind of groceries that I would normally get at the grocery store without having to go to the grocery store. So they deliver it right to your doorstep. Super, super cool. They're a big supporter of this channel. So I really, really thank them for giving all this stuff to my fans and followers. You can check out my various bundles there, fasting, keto, everything that you would need to really get in a healthy lifestyle. So they're down below in the description after we watch the rest of this video. Some people wanna fast, some people don't want to fast. Well, there's ways that you can get the benefit of fasting as far as the body composition results go without actually fasting. You see, it's called a protein sparing modified fast, and I've done videos on it before because it's usually used in extreme weight loss situations. You see, I used it a little bit and lost about 20 pounds with it or so when I was going through my transformation, but I didn't realize that it could be used so effectively for maintenance. Protein sparing modified fast is where you cut out pretty much everything with the exception of high amounts of protein generally coming from very lean sources. So things like lean chicken, things like very lean beef or lean turkey, and a lot of good quality fish, seafood, shellfish, stuff like that. The idea is you're mimicking a fast because what you're doing is you're forcing your body to run on stored fat tissue while you are supplying your body with enough protein to ensure that you don't have a lot of metabolic turnover of protein, meaning you're not wasting your muscle. Now, the International Journal of Obesity found that when you do this with like an 800 to 1200 calorie range, it seems to work out pretty darn good. Now, does this mean that you should do this protein sparing modified fast all the time? And what does it really look like? Well, I don't think you should do it all the time. If you're doing it for maintenance, here's the idea. You go with your normal pattern of eating. Maybe it's keto, maybe it's vegan, maybe it's paleo. But then periodically, you go through a two, three, four day period of time where you do a protein sparing modified fast. And what that would look like is you consume about one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So if you are a 200 pound individual, you'd consume 200 grams of protein per day from lean protein sources like chicken, like beef, like fish, something that's lean because you don't want the added fats. And what that does is in addition to lots of hormone signaling and in addition to lots of PPAR alpha activation and different genetic expression, you're doing some really cool things. You're forcing your body to use your stored body fat. Now, why would this not work over the long term for someone that's at a maintenance level? because you run into an issue with something that we've heard of before called rabbit starvation. Now the rabbit starvation was discovered because we looked at explorers that were going through um, uh, periods of time in the winter where they were exploring and there was nothing to eat except for rabbits. Rabbits are very lean and they got very sick when they ate nothing but rabbits for extended periods of time, which leads us to believe that if we were to eat lean meat and only lean meat, we might get sick. Well, the issue is those explorers, those individuals were already lean. They were already people that had been hiking and exploring and traveling, so they had no fat to burn. So the protein sparing modified fast as an extreme weight loss tool was designed for very obese or people with more than 25 pounds to lose. But it still works very well for maintenance if you do it for three or four days at a time, once or twice a month, 
as a surge to allow your body to A, still know how to use fat as a fuel source effectively, but B, force your body to run on those stored fats, even if they're small and minuscule, for at least a short period of time. There's a lot of different benefits that we can talk about, and I encourage you to reference my protein sparing modified fast video from a few weeks ago that talks about that overall effect, I'll link to it. But if you do this periodically, it can yield some pretty awesome results. Biochemically, what's happening is your body has no choice but to run on the stored fat that you have, but it also is upregulating what's called gluconeogenesis, where your body is now taking protein that you consumed and it's turning it into glucose, mainly to fuel your brain. Remember, generally, with this protein sparing modified fast maintenance protocol, you're gonna be between 500 and 1200 ish calories per day. That's pretty low for most people and that would mean that your brain might not function really well. But if you're providing yourself with adequate amounts of protein, your liver can do a good job of turning that into glucose to provide your brain with fuel. Well, when it turns it into glucose, that costs metabolic energy. It's like me giving you $2 and you giving me $1 back. It's not quite fair. It costs more energy to produce that $1. So point is, you consume this protein and your liver has to turn it into glucose that costs energy, but at least you get your glucose out of the deal. You have to kind of cut your losses. This means that your body upregulates all kinds of fat burning processes. So to give you just a simple sample breakdown of what this might look like if you're just at your goal weight and you want to maintain, well, every two weeks or so, do three days of this one gram of protein per pound of body weight and don't add any additional fats, no oils, don't cook in butter, don't cook in any oil, okay? and then do not add any more than 20 grams of carbohydrates from vegetables only, mainly from lettuce, celery, stuff like that. No starchy vegetables, nothing like that, just some leafy greens, and honestly, you probably are better just to keep those out of the equation. Now what's important is when you come out of a protein sparing modified fast, that you slowly reintroduce carbohydrates, even if you've only been doing it for three or four days. Do not go right back to the amount of carbohydrates you were consuming before. You will run into an issue, and you'll probably feel sick. You wanna do one day of 50% your carbo normal carbohydrates, then the next day do 75%, and then the third day go back to your 100% normal carbohydrate protocol. This is what I've determined works really well if you're consuming carbohydrates and you're trying to implement this protein sparing modified fast. I can do more detail on this if this is something that you're interested in as far as maintenance, but you have to make sure you comment down below so that I know it's something that you want. As always, see you tomorrow.